Can you buy property in Prince Edward Island? Do you know what IRAC is, Island Regulatory Appeals Commission? What information do you require to put on a purchase and sale agreement to buy property in PEI? These questions and more are gonna be answered in this video here today. So number one, can you buy property in Prince Edward Island? Absolutely. Do not believe any rumors or misinformation that come from other provinces diverting you away from this beautiful island province. You absolutely can buy property in PEI, and in some areas, there's more off-island owners than there are island residences. Secondly, what is IRAC? IRAC stands for Island Regulatory Appeals Commission. You can check out their website at irac.pe.ca, and IRAC governs everything from oil prices, propane prices, rent, and land acquisitions. So, where IRAC plays into the purchases of properties in PEI is, number one, if you're buying more than five acres or 165 feet of water frontage, you're allowed up to that allotment per person. So two names on the deed would double that to 10 acres, 320, so on and so forth. Some deals may even have eight, nine, 10 owners on them. So that's how it affects the purchases of land. Secondly, it would affect residences if they're acquiring property or moving a property into a corporation. They may have to go through the IRAC appeal process or application process as well, even though they're island residences or that corporation has an off-island shareholder. Most of this information is on the website. And finally, with respect to IRAC, is you can check to see if a property is identified. Identification means that someone has purchased that property and they're under the condition or pretense that it can't be subdivided or developed for 10 years by making an application to remove that. I'm not gonna get into all that, but you can find out if a property has been identified by going to the IRAC uh, database, you go to irac.pe.ca, go to lands protection, go to the LPA database and type in the property ID number. That will tell you if it's ever been identified for non-development. Finally, we're going to cover the purchase and sale. So the purchase and sale forms we're referring to are the ones that are approved by Korea, Canadian Real Estate uh, Association. Number one, we need the names of the purchasers or the entity or entities. Typically, this would probably be one or two people. In some cases, it could be many people. And if it's many people, it'd be usually put somewhere else on the form or in the form of an amendment outlining who those purchasers are. In some cases, what people will do to make it easier is they'll just put or assignee or assignees, and then the contract can be put in anyone's name at closing or conveyance. The only challenge with this is that contract in theory could be and has been in the past sold because the contract's assignable. The vendor may not be too happy to know you just flipped the property out and didn't even own it. The other problem with the signees is that financing may be an issue and the bank may want that removed because sometimes it will play into money laundering. Uh, secondly, it could be a corporation. If it's a corporation, again, you may fall into IRAC issues or applications. So we've got the names of the purchasers, at the bottom of that first page, we've got the closing date. That's the date you take possession of the property. And after that, we got the pre-closing inspection. Pre-closing inspection means you're going to walk through the property, house, building, structure, whatever. Make sure it's in the same condition as when you saw it initially, either in person or virtually. On the second page, top paragraph three, we've got the inclusions. Obviously, all the stuff that's bolted in and any normal person would think would come with the house, trim the grass comes with the house, anything you want to add to that, regardless of whether or not it's on the MLS cut sheet, should be specified. Typical inclusions could be fridge, stove, washer, dryer, sometimes get into lawnmowers and the odd car or boat. So that's the inclusions. And then we whip over to the Schedule A, which has a bunch of standard clauses I've covered in other videos. We've got the financing clause, which typically is between seven to 10 days if you're not paying cash. We've got an insurance clause. It just means the place is insurable. That's not gonna be an issue in most cases, unless there's open flames, wood stoves, uh, unapproved fireplaces, styrofoam that's exposed in the basement and other areas. So we've got the insurance. We've got the septic tank inspection, which in PEI isn't much of an inspection because they're not really inspecting the field. What they're doing is they're taking the lid off the septic tank, checking the tank out, which is typically constructed of concrete, 
and making sure the water levels are all correct and all that sort of stuff and the tank isn't correct isn't cracked. They typically don't inspect the field. We don't really have the technology here to do that yet. Other clauses in the Schedule A pertaining to homes would be a home inspection. Some agents like myself are offering pre-inspections and pay for that, which is great because it saves you up to $750. Uh, other clauses would be conditional on IRAC, uh, the vendor doing a water test, if it's on a well, the vendor will typically do a bacteria and chemical water test. You'll also have to outline if you're going to assume any uh, propane tanks. If there's propane tanks, the rental is usually around 100 bucks a year approximately, plus or minus per tank. Uh, most buyers would just assume that tank. If you don't want it, they'll remove it and refund the vendor the cost of the fuel. Uh, that's about it in a nutshell as far as what we require for the purchase and sale financing insurance. There's a fuel tank clause, which is clause four in the Schedule A. If it's a metal tank, the insurance company may want that replaced with fiberglass. Uh, number five is the condition to sell your house. If the offer is written based on you selling a house, say in Ontario, that would be clause number five. And then you get into the water test septic system and not on our Schedule A for houses, but is on for land is Iraq, if you're buying a large amount of land and you're non-resident or waterfront exceeding 165 feet of frontage. So that's basically it in a nutshell per se. Have yourself a great day. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell symbol beside it. Bye for now.